Hey folks, this is Max from Woodsman's Finest and today I want to come at you with another video in my spoon carving kit series. Um, I know that you folks are pretty interested in what's out there, um, what maybe I'm or other um, spoon carvers are using and I want to present a new to me hook knife to you today. This is the Reachworks all round hook knife. Stay tuned. Here we go folks, so this is the reach words, I would call it the all round hook knife. I don't know if he would call it the same name, but um, I'm gonna get to why I'm talking about it like that. Um, I discovered Reed during my time in Ontario on Instagram and I was absolutely blown away by his Mokotogans, um, the way he organizes his whole workflow which is a very fascinating thing for me as well and just by the overall look and um, ingenuity of his work. So we started chatting and I really like chatting with um, craftsmen like this because I don't you know I want to express my gratitude for you know inspiring other people or sometimes I ask a question and I get asked questions and you know it's just a it's just a trait to a certain degree. A lot of blacksmiths not saying that I haven't done any forging yet, but I'm still very much at the beginning compared to other people. So I'm always very, very grateful when, um, if and when I can learn from other people. So um, we just started the dialogue and along the way, sometimes we just um, talked about spoon carving knives. And I offered Reed to just use one of his knives um, and, um, you know, it was just kind of an exchange. Um, he got one of my spoons and... Uh, I was able to obtain one of his wonderful knives. Um, so this one here is about not not exactly two inch across um, and a asymmetric sweep. Okay, that's a very important point. It has a hollow on the inside um, and it has rather straight bevels, not exactly convex on the outside. Okay. So, as you know me, I'm a very, very big fan of one tool options. Not to say that I don't have too many tools, but I'm searching for the tools that I can use, or I know I use the tool most of the time that I can do most of the jobs with. So as you may know, or may not know, from my Carlson hook knife video, I, this is probably still one of my go-to knives here the Hans Carlsen hook knife. There is a video about this knife out there as well and I can absolutely 100% sorry recommend it. What I, what I love about this knife is the asymmetric curve. It allows me to do roughing and finishing jobs with one knife and um, there's a lot more good things to say about this knife here. It transfers energy like no other hook knife I've ever had. However, just in comparison, you can probably tell that there's quite a few similarities in those two sweeps. When I forge my own hook knives, then I also, sorry guys, I'm just trying to focus here nicely. Um, I'm also trying to um, incorporate a flat curve and this is not a continuous one this is actually nearly symmetric to about here to help me finishing and then we have a rather um, tight curve on the top here in order to hollow stuff this way when I go deeper down into bowls cooks and the like it's just one of my hook knives from 01 tool steel but you see I really like these asymmetric curves so on my way to going from something like this here, which is obviously an X dot blank, to one of my spoons, um, and I'm really trying to take care to to leave only the necessary material in the bowl to make him as comfortable and still sturdy as possible. And as you probably know, 
my signature keels that just very very comfortable in hand but all of my bowls are very sturdy but they also need to be finished very very nicely because that's the function of a spoon what other function does it have if it's not finished nicely on the inside of the spoon bowl okay that brings me back to the knife um, I don't think I have finished a bowl ever as cleanly as with this knife and there are several reasons for that one reason is um, the curve that is really lending itself to the inside of the spoon bowl very nicely um, another reason is that we having a rather straight bevel on the outside um, and the two shoulders on the inside where it can be sharpened very easily um, that brings me to a very important point about this knife um, there is some similarities to Nick Westerman knives and I've been talking to both craftsmen and I am in contact with both craftsmen and um, I think Reed has been working with Japanese woodworking tools prior to making hook knives like this a lot so he's familiar with the hollows on the inside or on the underside of woodworking tools like on Kana and Yariganas but he's also aware that Nick Westerman brought this as a pioneer into the hook knife and green woodworking tools and Reed is absolutely rejecting and refusing to um, take on any requests and make any hook knives for people who, re who ask him to copy a Nick Westerman Tuka Cam or something else that's very signature to, to Nick and that is, that is quite a significant thing they both are in contact with each other they respect each other a lot and um, we all are aware and absolutely uh, um, respecting that Nick is, in my opinion and in their opinion and in Reed's opinion, the, the pioneer to bring this kind of design into green woodworking tools. However, um, I think Reed really did his own take on it. This is a hook knife style that, that Nick doesn't do. And uh, Reed um, just came up with this one here because it just, you know, it's just for him this um, uh, all-round tool that does several jobs. Um, so I just wanted to get this out of the way because it's a little bit of a difficult topic and I'm not even sure if I did a good job on it, but um, just maybe take it for what it's worth. Um, my little cousin is roaming the yard. Um, yeah, so what else is about so to say about this? When you, when you, when, um, you get it, um, it comes with about a two inch tang that is more than enough and I made myself a handle from Japanese bamboo that was just lying around um, for probably two years ever since I made, used to make flutes from those um, and I decided to keep the note Hey man, how's it going? And I decided to keep the, the note here in the middle just in order to have a little bit of a palm swell um, as well, I just um, made facets, basically a uh, elongated octagonal shape, and you see the hole that's naturally in the bamboo. Um, just a elongated octagonal shape, and um, this is really working well. So yeah, this handle um, I just left it a little bit longer because there is quite a few techniques where I'm I like to basically choke back on the handle and. As you know, there is a lot of techniques using some kind of fulcrum, pushing with the other hand. So it's good to leave them a little bit longer, um, but also not too long. Otherwise, if there's too much stuff sticking out on the back here, um, it nearly feels a little bit unbalanced. Um, not sure if that makes any sense, but I just, you know, feel like that is something I wanted to mention. Um, about the hook knife, um, there's some footage I'm going to play now about me using it. Um, it was a pleasure, it is a pleasure to use, um, it cuts really well. The straight bevel is maybe, it cuts well, um, it also bites well, it's just a little bit less 
um, comfortable or easy to get out of the cut so I get a little bit of scattering about over the surface um, in some occasions but um, I'm planning on just like continuously when I sharpen it to slightly convex a little bit more so it comes out of the cut as nicely as some of my other hook knives but it's just really really um, a minor thing that um, I noticed because I was very very picky and I was carving some pretty difficult wood um, in fact some just bone dry um, Austrian cherry and uh, this stuff can be quite difficult to carve um, when you go across the the growth rings if that makes any sense the finish on these and on everything I've seen uh, and held from from Reed is perfect impeccable um, they come really well packed the, um, the prices are good very good and, and they're tools you have for the rest of your life that's for sure um, as far as thickness goes I can tell a tiny little bit of flex um, and the material being not that thin, it's not as thin as a robin wood that um, I was not able really to use because it was just so flexible. Um, but it is a little bit flexible, but that's absolutely not a problem. Um, it actually nearly, it doesn't, doesn't really aid you or support you in, in carving. Um, I haven't really carved completely green wood with this. It's gonna be a laser, I know that from my experience. This is gonna be a freaking razor. Um, I have carved very very tough wood with it, the edge retention is great, um, if I haven't mentioned this yet, um, this knife is made from 1084 carbon steel which is one of my personal favorite steels as well. I know that Reed is going through very controlled and conscious heat cycling in order to get very fine grain so um, absolutely not a problem right there, edge retention is great. Or a piece of uh, semi cured birch here to hollow out, and uh, as I expected, it's going really, really smooth with this knife. I have to say that uh, for the hollowing, I'm very often using to say for the hollowing, I'm very often using what I call the, the least stuffer method where I'm basically carving like this with one hand and then there is a, a little bit of a tight radius here um, so I usually do that um, from the top down using really the smaller radius here and it's really working well I mean, still not every knife is going to do everything 100% perfectly. But I think when it comes to choosing a hook knife, it's really about making the best possible compromise. So I just wanted to show you guys. The initial hollowing with this blade. What I mean by initial hollowing, you're gonna find out in one of my spoon carving videos. Cheers. Folks, thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope that this video helped you in any way. I'm gonna link Reed's 
um, address on Instagram and everything down below as usually. Yeah, um, these toolkit videos are definitely done for you. So you um, get maybe a little bit of help on making a commitment to whatever tool. I can absolutely recommend Reed's hook knife for any spoon carver. Um, if it's the only spoon knife you have, you absolutely got a great knife to do anything from normal eating size spoons all the way up to cooks and cooking spoons so yeah I, I really dig it the difference in the, the curve or the asymmetric curve is really helping you doing anything from roughing all the way to complete finishing cuts my spoon balls improved because of the knife in a way or rather i found a new approach to spoon bowls as well because of a different knife i every time do and i always enjoy it and yeah if you have any questions please um, feel free to ask i um, try to keep these videos coming thank you for supporting the channel and tuning in just um, click the like and subscribe button as you get told by every youtuber these days because this stuff is takes takes just a lot of time and money and I'm always happy to improve my quality of the videos and I hope it works and you guys have a good quality experience. Okay, so wherever you are, folks, I wish you a great day and stay safe and warm and I'm gonna see you next time. Cheers.